When you initially enter the cockpit, all the EIS display units are normally off. These DUs require AC electrical power to operate. For more information, you may refer to the FCOMDSC3175 electrical supply section of ATA31. When the EIS DUs are turned on, the related DU will display any image only after the self-test is complete. The engine information and the memos related to the actual configuration are displayed on the upper ECAM screen. The door oxy system page is displayed on the lower ECAM screen. This system page is the defaulted page in that ECAM phase. Notice the following indications, the open doors and the crew oxygen, which is not yet switched on. Each time that the APU must be started, the actual system page is replaced by the APU page. For instance, during the preliminary cockpit preparation, as soon as the APU master switch is set to on, the door oxy page is automatically replaced by the APU page. Notice that, in this case, on the ECP, the APU key is not lighted. Few seconds after the APU has been started, the APU page is removed and is replaced by the page related to the current phase. Here, the door oxy page. As you are still in the preliminary cockpit preparation, the recall key must be pressed. When it is pressed, a green normal message is displayed for a few seconds on the left side of the engine warning display to indicate that no warning or caution messages have been previously cleared and still present. But this key must be pressed for at least 3 seconds and you have to check that no cautions are displayed. It indicates that no caution messages have been previously cancelled by the Emmer cancel key and still present. Then, the keyboard of the ECAM control panel must be used in order to check systems such as the hydraulic and the engine. Notice that, when pressed, the related key light comes on. When the lighted key is pressed again, the displayed page returns to the defaulted one. Here the door oxy page. Now, the cockpit preparation is complete and you are ready to start the engines. For that, the engine mode selector must be set to ignition start. Notice that the engine page is automatically presented in order for the crew to monitor the different secondary parameters during the start sequence. Then, as soon as the first engine has been started, the ECAM phase changes. After starting the second engine, when the engine mode selector is set back to normal, the engine page is automatically replaced by the wheel page in order for the flight's crew to monitor that system during taxi. Two minutes after starting engines, on the left side of the engine warning display, the takeoff memo appears with some items in blue. As soon as the related action is done, the blue item turns to green. On the ECP, a takeoff config key allows you to check the configuration of the plane for takeoff before applying the takeoff engine power. Assume that you forgot to set the pitch trim into the green takeoff sector, so when the takeoff config key is pressed, an ECAM warning is triggered. When the configuration is correct, and the key is pressed again, the blue item turns to green. In order to perform the flight controls check, the wheel page will be automatically replaced by the flight control page as soon as the side stick or a rudder pedal is moving. When the side stick and the rudder pedals are released, the wheel page returns. This is because 
During the taxi phase, the PMF needs to monitor this page. As soon as the engine takeoff power is applied by moving the thrust lever to Tauga or flex detente, the wheel page is replaced by the engine page and the ECAM enters in the inhibition phases. To confirm it, the right side of the engine warning display will show a magenta message takeoff inhibit. When a fault is detected while the ECAM is in these phases, and depending on the importance of the fault, the caution message will be delayed. Here a generator fault has been detected, but it will be inhibited until the end of the phase number 5. Above 1,500 feet or 2 minutes after liftoff, the magenta takeoff inhibit message is removed and the left side of the engine warning display displays the related caution message as it is no longer inhibited. First, cancel the master caution lights. Read the title of the caution. Then follow the actions requested by the pilot flying. For instance, retract the flaps and slats and do the after takeoff checklist. Then, when established on a safe flight path, the pilot flying will ask for ECAM actions. We will do it for you. Notice that, as the faulty generator has been recovered, the ECAM is back to the normal memo messages on the engine warning display and to the defaulted page on the SD. That defaulted page will be the cruise page. If in this phase number 6, slats flaps have been retracted and takeoff power is not maintained, or after a delay of 1 minute with slats flaps not retracted, or after a delay of 1 minute with takeoff power maintained. In the cruise phase, the pilot non-flying has to review some systems by using the individual system keys or the all key. When that all key is pressed and held down, the cruise page is replaced by the different system pages successively at one second interval, starting from engine page and following the keyboard order. As soon as the key is released, the sequence stops on the displayed system and the related key light is on. If the ALL key is pressed again and held down, the sequence continues. Notice that if a system key has been already selected and the ALL key is pressed and held down the sequence will start from this selected system. Note: The ALL key is always available even if the system key bower does not work. During the descent, the ECAM status page must be checked. To do that, we will press the status key for you. Notice that, as this page is empty, it will stay displayed for a few seconds. Below 2000 feet, the left side of the engine warning display shows the landing memo with some blue items as they are not yet done. As soon as the gear lever is set to down, and provided the altitude is below 16,000 feet, the wheel page is automatically shown. In order to monitor the landing gear extension, then the flaps can be set to the next position. Below 800 feet, the ECAM enters in the inhibition phases. So, to confirm it, the right side of the engine warning display shows a magenta message, landing inhibit. If a caution was detected in the phase 7 or 8, and, according to its importance, it could be inhibited. For instance, if an ADR2 fault has occurred after touchdown, this ECAM caution will be delayed until the end of the phase 8. During deceleration, below 80 knots, the landing inhibit message 
is removed on the right side of the engine warning display. Notice that, if during landing, everything is normal, the left side of the engine warning display shows the current memo messages. At parking, and at engine shutdown, the wheel page, is replaced by, the door oxy page. In order for the crew, to check the status of the doors. If, after engine shutdown, at the bottom of the engine warning display, the status caption is pulsing white, it indicates that, the maintenance part of the status page, holds a message for maintenance. So, the status key, must be pressed, to display the related status page. We will do it for you. When the status page is displayed, it shows the maintenance messages. At transit you should disregard it, unless it is the air bleed message. At main base, or at airport where repairs can be done, and provided it is the last flight of the day, you should report for maintenance analysis. Then, the EIS display screens must be dimmed. Then, five minutes after engines shut down, the phase 10 of the ECAM ends and the phase 1 is activated for the next flight, even if the electrical system is not shut down, as for transit flight.